Hello grade 11s, in this video we're going to be looking at the molecular shapes. Now this is a very very important video, I show you the different shapes like bends or linear or tetrahedral, you need to know how to draw a Lewis dot diagram and determine the molecular shape from that because that will help us to determine whether a molecule is non-polar covalent or polar covalent. So watch the whole video through for all the teacher tips, subscribe for more videos like this and let's jump right into this one. So we'll be looking at using our Lewis dot diagrams to predict molecular shapes. And now some teachers might not use this word or say this word. It's not always in the ATPs, but it is in textbooks and it is in study guides. So I thought I would mention it. It's called the VSEPR. For short, I know it's not correct or whatever, but I just say the VSEPR theory. VSEPR, it stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion model. You don't need to know what it stands for. As I said, some teachers won't even say the VSEPR or the VSEPR theory. They'll just say, we're going to learn about molecular shapes. But I wanted to tell you that it's based on this model. And basically what this is all about is using your Lewis dot diagrams, looking at the bonding pairs, the number of bonding pairs, and the number of lone pairs on the central atom, so the middle atom, to determine the shape that the molecule will have. And I want to start off by showing you water. Now, when we draw the Lewis dot diagram for water, you may draw something that looks like this. Oxygen has six valence electrons represented by the crosses. Hydrogen is, each has one um, represented by the dots. And that's how the, the Lewis dot diagram looks. So in your mind, if you don't know in reality what water looks like, then you might think that it looks like this, like a flat linear molecule, like in one plane like that. However, those of you that have seen textbooks, that have seen diagrams of water, you know that water is often depicted to look like this or like this. This is called a bent shape. It's called an angular shape. And the reason it looks like this and this and not straight or flat or linear like this is because of this model, the valence shell electron pair repulsion model. What it says over here is this model is a technique for predicting the shapes of molecules. You look at how the bonding pairs of atom, of electrons and the lone pairs of electrons are arranged around each atom. And basically what happens is these lone pairs and these bonding pairs are arranged in such a way to make the angle between them as big as possible. And think about it. Why would we want the angle around them to be as big as possible? Because if you have a bonding pair of electrons right next to a bonding pair of electrons, electrons are negative. So if you have bonding pair here, bonding pair here, negative here, negative here, like charges repel. So that's not good. It creates an unstable molecule. So if we make the angle between them bigger, so shift them down a little bit, then there's less of a repulsive force between the bonding pairs or the lone pairs that minimizes repulsion. So there's less repulsion. So we have a more stable molecule. And that is essentially what this says. Electron pairs bonding and lone repel each other so they arrange themselves as far apart as possible to minimize the repulsion forces this ensures that we have a lower potential energy and if you remember my video on the graph of potential energy then you know low potential energy is good it means stable molecule so these are essentially the shapes that you need to know i've listed all of them here i will go over each of them in detail with examples i have a summary table i'll also show you this really cool simulation that illustrates this really really nicely but what i'm showing you at the moment is a nice little summary we call these these listed over here the ideal shapes and ideal shapes have no lone pairs on the central atom okay the central atom is the middle atom if you look at this diagram over here for example this i don't know if you can see where i'm pointing really but this over here is a bonding pair that's a bonding pair that's a bonding pair this is the central atom there are no lone pairs contrast that to this molecule over here here's a bonding pair here's a bonding pair but this over here in this bubble that's a lone pair you can see the little pair of there here's another lone pair so just by the way this is actually a a, a proper diagram, a 3D model of what water looks like in real life. Remember, it's got the bonding pair there, so that would be this one. It's got the bonding pair there, which would be this one. Then it has two lone pairs. Think back to the Lewis dot diagram we drew. There's one lone pair, there's another. 
And I hope you can tell that the angle between the bonding pairs and the lone pairs, that angle there, is maximized. So they're as far away from each other as possible to minimize repulsion. So these ones have lone pairs on the central atom. Here's the central atom. Here's one lone pair. Here's another lone pair. In this one, here's the central atom. Here's one lone pair. They're called non-ideal shapes, and these ones are called ideal shapes. So I'll be going over this table that summarizes everything you need to know about the different molecular shapes, the description, general formula, which I'll get to, they can ask about, an example, and what the shape looks like in real life. The first one that we have is something called a linear shape. Now, linear, think flat like that. And the description over here, and there are exceptions to everyone, everything just by the way, but I'll get to those. The description says two pairs of electrons around the central atom. Here's my general formula, AX2. Now, A is the central atom, and then X2 basically says that there's two atoms bonded to the central atom. Here are my examples. CO2 and BeCl2. So A is my central atom. Here you can see in carbon dioxide, it's the carbon. In BeCl2, it's the Be, it's the beryllium. And then X2 is telling me that there's two atoms that are joined or attached or bonded to the central atom. So O2 or Cl2. And this is more or less what the shape looks like. You can see it's linear. You can see it is flat. You do not need to draw the 3D version of the shape. You will be asked, what is the molecular shape of CO2? You need to draw the Lewis-Dot diagram and look and decide what is the general formula. And from the general formula, you'll be able to actually tell me, oh, it's a linear molecule. So that's my first one. And examples of linear molecules over here, as I've mentioned, is BeCl2. If you take a look at the Lewis-Dot diagram of BeCl2, um, they didn't use different symbols here in their Lewis dot diagram because they use different colors. But if you were to do this, please use different color symbols. So for BE, you could use crosses. And for CL, you could use the dots. Here you can see that this is the central atom, BE. Okay. And it's bonded to two chlorines. So AX2 is what we call the general formula. So this is a linear shape. Please also just take note that there's no lone pairs on the central atom. That's a bonding pair, that's a bonding pair. No lone pairs, so it's linear. And as you can see, the angle between these two bonding pairs are as maximum, or they're, big, they're as big as they can be, basically. It's 180 degrees. So here's an example using the simulation. Here you can see what CO2 looks like in real life. And the electron geometry, molecular geometry, the electron geometry just tells me, okay, based on the pairs of, electrons that I have over here. So this over here, these two, I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing, but these two, I know it's a double bond, but essentially it functions as like one shared pair. Although I know it's two shared pairs, but in this model, that's what they say. And there's another one over there. So it's linear. The molecular geometry is also linear. There's no lone pairs to distort this molecule. Okay. Bond angle, here you can see 180. Here's another important example of linear. And it's carbon dioxide, as I've mentioned. Now, remember the important thing, there's no lone pairs on the central atom. I know these oxygens have lone pairs, but I don't care about the outer atoms. On the central atom, there's no lone pairs. So the general formula that corresponds to this is AX2. The A is the central atom, the carbon. The X2 essentially technically refers to the fact that this counts as one pair of electrons that are shared. I know it's two pairs here, but it effectively counts as one and one here. Or you can think of it as one oxygen, two oxygens, AX2. Then our next one is called trigonal planar or trigonal planar, however you say it, doesn't really matter. Three pairs of electrons around the central atom. AX3 is your general formula. And an example of this is BH3. This is what it looks like. Here's an example, that same example that was in the table. We know that hydrogen each has one valence electron and B boron has three. One, two, three. I've changed the symbol so that the Bs have crosses, the Hs have circles or dots. And we can see that the B, the boron, has no lone pairs on the central atom. So it's AX3, which corresponds to trigonal planar. And that, again, is what it looks like. Then we've got tetrahedral. 
that is four pairs of electrons around the central atom, so AX4. So an example is BCl4, and that's what the molecule looks like. Then we've got trigonal bipyramidal. So five pairs of electrons, that's the general formula, for example, PCl5. And then we've got octahedral, six pairs of electrons, AX6 and SF6 is an example. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to untick this, where it says electron geometry and molecular geometry, and I'm going to put a shape up, and I want you to tell me what you think the name of the shape is. So this one is linear, as we've already discussed, the general formula AX2. Okay, next shape, you can see all the different angles over here. You guys can tell me what you think this is. So we've got a central atom and one, two, three, okay? Um, surrounding atoms. So this one is trigonal planar. And just for your interest, there's the bond angles. Right, take a look at this one. This is an interesting one. So I will hold it still so you can see what you think. There's the central atom, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I hope you're telling me octahedral. Right, here is another molecule, interesting in shape. This is what it looks like in real life. I hope you can see one, two, three, four, five over there. So we've got trigonal bipyramidal. Now, the reason it's called trigonal bipyramidal is remember when we had tr um, trigonal or trigonal planar? Okay, so I'll just show you quickly what that one looked like. Do you see how it was three little things? It was flat like that. So trigonal, so three, tri, like a triangle, and planar meaning flat or in one plane. So flat like this. Now, trigonal bipyramidal is quite similar to that, and that's why it's got that name. If you think about it, it looks like this. So it looks almost like the one we just saw. I don't know if you can visualize it, but it's like the flat one. It's like trigonal planar, but it has one going straight up and one going straight down, like little two pyramids. That's why it's called bipyramidal. It's like a pyramid on the top and a pyramid on the bottom. Here's another type. That is tetrahedral. Now let's take a look at what we call the non-ideal molecular shapes. Remember the ideal molecular shapes had no lone pairs on the central atom. The non-ideal molecular shapes, they have lone pairs on the central atom, and we will speak about this in another video, but they have an asymmetrical charge distribution because of this lone pairs on the central atom. So we've got two that you need to know. There are more that exist. But the ones that you guys need to know is bent or angular, like water. So take a look at the general formula. It's AX2, E2. The E2 means lone pairs. And then trigonal pyramidal. Now, don't get this confused with trigonal bipyramidal. This is trigonal pyramidal. It forms like one little pyramid. You can see that looking at this diagram over here. Those three go down like this. It looks like a little pyramid with the lone pair at the top. Okay. Right, so there we go, and it's AX3E. Remember, the E means lone pairs. So here's an example of a bent or an angular one. As I mentioned, water is a good example of this one. If you draw the Lewis dot diagram, you can see that we've got our central atom, which is A. We've got two bonding pairs over there, or two bonded atoms on the side. That's where the X2 comes from. And the E2 comes from the fact that there's not one lone pair, but two lone pairs. This is what makes it bent or angular, and this is how water looks in real life. Then looking at an example of trigonal pyramidal, what we can see when we draw the Lewis dot diagram is our central molecule, or our central atom A, then it's got one, two, three hydrogens, so AX3, three little pairs over there, and then E representing one lone pair on the central atom. And here's a summary of all the different types that we just learned about. It is very, very, very important to know these different types. So I've circled the ideal molecular shapes and the bent or angular and the trigonal pyramidal. Those are non-ideal. Super important to be able to identify what molecular shape a substance or a compound has because that will help us to determine the molecular polarity. So is, is it a polar covalent molecule or is it a non-polar covalent molecule? The shape along with the difference in electronegativity will help us decide that. So check out more videos linked in the description box below for me where I go over that. And I hope to see you then. Subscribe for more.
Bye, everyone.